featuring experts from the Met Film School, the National Film and TV School, and nationally recognised authors and from industry experts from BBC Drama, this resource is ideal for taking your newly found skills in lighting and camera and developing them much further with sophisticated and detailed on-location masterclasses that will explore every aspect of advanced lighting and camera skills for drama. What exactly are the steps from going from a script to a finished lighting setup? What is it the professionals do to make their stories and productions look fantastic? What is that film look and just how do you get it? It's not impossible and it's here you find out how. Consider the following example. On the left we have a very flat boring look where the background and the subject seem to merge into one. It's a very flat or dull video look. On the left we have that great film look with plenty of depth where the subject stands out from the background. How do we do that? You'll get to go on set with costume dramas and visit the latest BBC spy thrillers to see how it's done. Here is where you'll explore ways of lighting day to look like night creating dramatic looking sets and scenes and exploring the skills used by professional cinematographers to bring the director's vision to life using lights, cameras and yes, action on set. The way we use lenses, focal length and what we call drawing power or the perspective is really crucial to what we're telling the audience. On this shot here, I've got a nice deep two shot. So we're, we're talking about depth and perspective, we're seeing a little bit of the background that's fine, but at the end of the dialogue, or during the dialogue, I may want to go in for a close-up. Now, if I leave the same lens on, this is a 28 millimeter working on a four-thirds of an inch chip, um, roughly the same size as 35 mm film. If I take this up, I'm just going to do this very crudely for the moment, and if I come into here and refocus. Now, if you look, the lady has got a slight touch of the mumps. The cheeks have become bigger, the ears become very small because the relative distance from the nose to the ears is now huge, whereas back there it wasn't. What I'm now going to do is put the camera back there, do the same close-up on a longer lens. See how much more you like it. This time, I'm going to put a 100 millimeter on, so that's roughly four times as long a focal length. So i put that carefully into there. So we now put that back on there, and of course, we need to focus the lens, so... Uh, now there's a shot on our leading lady's face, almost exactly the same size as we have in the 28, but much more flattering. For instance, you know, the cheekbones and the chin are nicely modelled, and the ears are natural size instead of being much smaller than the nose, which is what we're getting with the forced perspective on the 28. So you tend to use a longer lens for your close-ups, you don't go in. We explore the latest cameras and techniques and make sure you see what goes on behind the lens so that you can command and perfect what happens in front of the camera. You've been observing this with just the light from the window. What I can do is bring a little bit of fill on. Mr Dado Vigo has given us one of his beautiful lights here. Now as you can see we're lighting the window, we're using the window light which is daylight. This light is tungsten, it's not daylight but we can convert it by using a lovely little glass filter here. So here's our glass filter. Can you see that blue tinge? That's going to convert our tungsten light to daylight. Now it's daylight, now it will match. So now we can just pick out Lydia and also pick out the outline of Guy. And I'll show you what it looks like with a little bit of fill on. That's it, that's great. This is the resource to answer all those questions about what it is that transforms a film scene or a studio interview from OK to Oh Wow, How Do They Do That?